Hello, Anthony Totri. How are you doing, my good friend? I'm fantastic, guys. How are you? How's the hair real quick? Just want to make sure we're, we're all set. We're looks, all good looks here? Looks good. Looks good. What Perfect. do you say? Perfect. It looks just like Shears right now. It looks fantastic. That's what I was going for. That's what I was going for today. All right. Before yeah. we get started here, can we play the Totri back the A clip oh, to just show that Totri does back the A? Hold on. Back the A. Back the A. Welcome into the PHNX Sun Devil Show. You guys play that how often? <laughs> oh, we, we like this one a great deal, Totri. <laughs> it's good. All right. Sheer and I are going to go back and forth asking some questions here, but where should we start? Oh, let's talk about the sanctions that came down today. Herm Edwards. This guy is a fraud of epic proportions. How he is on ESPN now and still allowed to give his insight and talk about character and all of this. This guy is full of it. He's full of crap. And he set ASU back a long way, Anthony Totri. He absolutely did. And, and I think, again, the, the sanctions and the penalties um, that everybody sees today for Arizona State, there's nothing, I think, in those that Arizona State fans should be wildly surprised about. Um, I think you had a pretty good understanding that Arizona State and the new regime and Kenny Dillingham last year were going to kind of lean into suffering uh, those consequences as early as they possibly could. You look at the 2023 uh, bull ban, the self-imposed bull ban, Obviously, it looks good now based off of what that team accomplished. I think now it's more so just like it's almost the end, right? Almost the end. You still got the recruiting violations um, or I guess the the penalties that Arizona State is going to be suffering. Specifically, you look over the summer, there's going to be several weeks that Arizona State is not going to be able to, to really be in contact or hold visits with players, which is going to suck. Um, but thankfully, it, it looks like Arizona State can finally put this entire saga behind them but it, it certainly sucks and it's just a another reminder that here we are friday april 19th and we're still having to talk about herm edwards it's beautiful i'm okay with it <laughs> of course you are mike <laughs> with the with the the violations and all with the the recruiting sanctions are those like major like arizona couldn't go on the road for like months at a time yeah Is so they in the same boat from, from my understanding, it has to do in terms of contact specifically, so texting, calling, and then also having those players on campus. I'm not 100% sure if that does impact the the coach's ability to go out there um, on the road and recruit some of these guys. I imagine that that is probably um, something that Arizona State and these coaches probably will have to suffer with. But again, it is just, uh, I believe, August 1st, the the – violations in that type of stuff will be over Arizona state getting time served um, for those, those four years of probation. Did you think that, uh, let me ask you this. Do you th did anybody really understand like the gravity of how crappy the Herm Edwards era was going to be when he was let go? Because it feels like it just keeps getting worse and worse. And I keep seeing him on my TV, which makes me laugh even more. I, I, I think people were just so frustrated at the time um, that there, there was maybe a, a lack of like just how dirty that regime was. Now everybody has been cheating. It's just Arizona State got caught. That that's the situation. College football, college sports in general. Uh, you you know, Mike. It's for for such a long period of time. Everybody wants to talk about NIL and the transfer portal specifically. NIL has been happening for for decades now under the table. Um, now it's just people can talk about it. People know about it, and it's really out there a little bit more. 
in terms of Arizona State cheating with the the recruiting violations and that type of thing, what makes it so much worse in my mind is that again, it was happening during such a just crazy time period in the world, right? With, with the pandemic um, and, and Arizona State and Herm Edwards, whether it was purposeful, um, like it, it was certainly just a, a a bad look for the university for the regime and. and there's people that are like, oh, well, you know, it, part of it's Ray's fault, part of it's Herm's fault. It, it's it's both their fault. There, there's equal blame here um, for that, just the, the dumb and dumber for Arizona. So you got Harry Dunn and Lloyd Christmas, essentially. Yeah. All right, here's my question. Do you think, joking aside, that there was a little bit of mole work from Antonio Pierce from all this? Because he really did a good job of torpedoing the program. Sure, and you agree. He didn't, see, he didn't, he didn't do the interviews. So they can't give him the show cause or whatever because he's 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 not cooperating. Yeah, there are two individuals um, that still are, I guess, in disagreement um, and, and not fully accepting the violations. And uh, yes, Antonio Pierce is one of those individuals that is not accepting um, kind of the, the repercussions of the actions, which again, he was the recruiting coordinator at the time. Um, so it is certainly interesting to, to see that. And then it, it's... It's never going to go away. We're we're on what year three of this, and and you've got two individuals that are just like, no, we're not ready for this to be over with yet. Yet Antonio Pierce is the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, so it's it's a lot of fun here in Tempe. Of the gift that keeps giving. Toe tree, by the way, you need to you need to quote tweet Sheer more often and troll him. That was very very funny a couple <laughs> weeks ago. That made hey, me it was laugh. great for engagement, man. It was great for engagement. I don't mind, door. <laughs> you got to do it, Toe tree. More of this, Toe tree. More of this. But we got to ask you this now. You came on here and you made headlines throughout the world. Actually, just in Tucson. Throughout the world, that's what I do. Yeah, that's what you do. You said, Jaden Rashada, you would rather have him than Noah Fafita long term. Now, obviously, Jaden Rashada is moving on. Would you still rather have Jaden Rashada long term than Noah Fafita as a college uh, football fan? Uh, yeah, I, I am 100% going to stand on that. I think Jaden Rashada, again, uh, the, same, the same thing that I said the first go around. Jaden Rashada has the intangibles to be a better quarterback. You mean the tangibles because the intangibles are the mental part. The tangibles are the throwing. You can teach the that though. You could teach that. I can't teach a kid arm strength. I can't teach a kid size. I can't teach a kid to throw the ball as far and as fast and as strong as Jaden Rashada can. Um, now, I think Noah Fafita is certainly a, a better college quarterback as it stands right now, April 19th. Um, but – Things can change. I don't think, and I said it yesterday on the show, uh, the the breaking news pod that we did. I don't think Jaden Rashada is transferring with the the idea that he is going to start immediately. I know there's a lot of reports that Georgia is, is where he is projected to go. Um, when you miss an entire spring, it, the the impact that it's going to have on how soon you play is is pretty drastic. Also, considering Jaden Rashada just really got acclimated to to throwing this spring, hasn't even participated. Um, in all of the drills. So I would imagine he's transferring. He's going to go get a bag wherever he goes. Um, and the intention is probably that 2025 is going to be his year. And for Arizona State, with, with Sam Levitt on the team, you also bring in a guy like Tolufson, the class of 2025 quarterback, Jaden Rashada, kind of side of the writing on the wall that there was going to be competition throughout the time um, he was here at Arizona State. So you're saying that he's running from the competition at ASU to get to Georgia? Whether it be Georgia or wherever else. Um, it's, he's certainly going to make money. He's certainly going to get an upgrade, um, in his NIL status and what he was getting at Arizona state. All right. Coach, I'm giving you another, one more opportunity, <laughs> one more opportunity here. Who would you, so you would rather have in a vacuum, you would rather have Jaden Rashada for the next three years as your college football quarterback. than no Fafita. Fafita. This is Totri. I'm giving you another opportunity. <laughs> let us let you down solidly. Not the NFL in college. Just college. Come on, Totri. I get three years. I get three years. Are are we same roster? Like same are, are roster, we saying everything. same roster? The want? only thing that is changing is the quarterback. Yes. Yes. I'll take Jaden Rashad. Oh, <laughs> Totri! Come on, man. We're <laughs> trying to help you <laughs> here. That's like he's six no, to his is a good. Is better right now. He is better right now. Things change. Things change. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Fine. <laughs> let's let's talk. We, now there is a player on the roster that I would like to have. Oh, here we go. 
Can you get us, <laughs> how can you get us Elijah Badger? Help us help you. What can we do? Um that's a hot rumor. Come on, it's, it's Tree. Tough. Help you us know, help you. Come on. That that quarter billion dollars that was misplaced, if you slide that to us, then I think we can make you the deal. Oh, all I think right. that's look, I don't I don't think Elijah Badger is going anywhere. Um uh, I, I've been in pre- I've been pretty adamant. Yeah. I know there's I know there's individuals that that um think that Elijah Badger is, is headed out to the portal, and I will absolutely raise my hand. And, and if that happens, um I, I will say that I'm wrong. Uh, but I, I genuinely don't believe Elijah Badger is going anywhere for for multiple reasons. Um, he had the opportunity to leave already. There was you know money on the table elsewhere that he could have gone to, um, and, and he opted to stay at Arizona State. So, do you uh, want a Waffle think, House bet on this that he doesn't finish his career at ASU? Say that one more time. A Waffle House bet, maybe a tw- of the twenty-four <laughs> no, hour. I'm, I'm I'm done betting Waffle House. I'm all good on the waffles there. Okay, now I want to get I want to stick up for uh, Bobby Hurley here in a second. Oh here. Lord, no, this is good. This is good. Sheer and I are both going to stick up for Bobby yeah. Hurley. We're team Bobby. First, let's talk Jacob Kungaika. I okay. told Jason Sheer because here's what Sheer does. Whenever a player leaves the U of A, Sheer immediately says he sucks and that he wasn't no, good. I think was that good at Arizona, too. I never said he was awesome at Arizona. How has Kengaika been so far for you? He's looked good. He's looked good, but I, I will say the, the interior part of the Arizona State defensive line group isn't very, isn't very deep. The defensive line in general is, is kind of an unproven group, but specifically on the interior, Arizona State's like cream of the crop is CJ fight. Who was a freshman last year, played high school ball in Texas. He figures to be the starting interior defensive tackle for Arizona state. I would be shocked if Jacob Kungaika is not the second man um, right behind CJ, probably a starting caliber defensive lineman. The coaches talked before spring ball even started. They love the energy. He brings the juice in the meetings and in the workouts and stuff. He's brought it on the field as well. Um, and I think there is a little bit of a, a, a fire to, to that, right? There were probably a lot of Arizona fans, uh, that didn't like his departure, specifically the fact that he opted to go to the in-state rival, um, Arizona State. I know there were situations with some of the coaches at Arizona. Uh, but but again, I, I think Kangaika fits the personality of this staff really, really well. Um, I'm interested to see, though, how it translates uh, on Saturdays, obviously. All right. Now I will tell you. Oh, we got a super snap from to or a super snap for Toe Tree, by the way. A bag of chips from Toe Tree. Toe Tree, you help yourself to that Thanks, bag Brad. of chips. Thank you, One Brad. Minute. I appreciate you. Here's what I need you to ask. Uh, I need you to ask Kangaika, though. Did you know that his mother, serious? I'm, I'm not kidding around. His mother is still part of the Back the A movement. Really? Yes. She still likes Back the A stuff. She just recently removed the Back the A background. You need to ask him if his mother still backs the A. Will you do this? I, I'll ask him. I'll ask him specifically for you. That's all I ask. All right. Now we are going to stick up for Bobby Hurley and Dillingham here for a second and look at the real perpetrator of this. Wilner had an article or was it Wilner Shear or who was it? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was Wilner. Yeah, Wilner. All right. Basically, it, basically it was this is that ASU gets absolutely no support from the administration. The coaches get no support. The, uh, the finances are in the dumpster. Where uh, and Bobby Hurley is Bobby Hurley and Dilly are actually good dudes. Now, I hope they lose every game, but they're actually good dudes. But they why would any coach serious, serious question? Why would any coach want to go there when you are having this uphill battle? You guys call us the poverty school. We at least finance athletics. No, that's fair. That's a, that's a fair question. I think, again, I know Bobby Hurley wants to win here. He likes the challenge of of trying to win at Arizona State. Now, Kenny Dillingham, on the flip side of that, this was his dream job. Quite literally, grew up around Arizona State, grew up in the Valley, grew up a Sunnival fan, Cardinal fan, et cetera. Like, this is where he wants to be, so that explains why he's here. Now, you're right. Michael Crow, for for some time, hasn't really hid the fact that he doesn't support um, the athletic program the way that some of these other university presidents do. Uh, And it's definitely hindered Arizona State in the the nil era and it's only going to continue to hurt him as long as he he just kind of bypasses the the necessary funding for as arizona uh, fans, athletics, can, so as arizona it's, fans can we can can we uh you know michael crow he should probably stick around for quite a while 
Why doesn't uh, I think? Well, I think we all agree with this. You agree with this year? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Michael Crow. I think hey, what if, he gets a bum rap. Hey, you, <laughs> you want to know something about how much we're worried about uh, uh, getting somebody like Michael Crow is a row was a rallying cry for sure and I when we were talking about yeah. keeping Bobby Robbins, who absolutely should have been fired for like five different things. But are we are terrified of we see the example up north that you have to deal with. And we are terrified of that. We do not want players like that, or we do not want ADs like that, or presidents like that, uh, Anthony Totry. I think, uh, you know, I saw something out there that that said maybe the Arizona Board of Regents should just have Michael Crow be a, a, a joint president for <laughs> Arizona State and Arizona. I think I, I would welcome that idea. I, I think let Michael Crow run the show here and in Tucson. Um, I think that would just be beautiful. You guys agree? You love him so much. You know, we, we, we could share him. What do you say, Sheer? Can you imagine if he won out and got what he wanted and ran both <laughs> Arizona schools? Oh, not good. By the way, Totri, I'm going to check something. here. I saw this at the gym. These two kids were asking, uh, they were talking about rappers that I grew up listening to at the gym because I see this uh, shirt that you have. Yeah. So, and I asked them about these two rappers, or the shirt they were wearing. They didn't know who they were. Let me ask you this. Who are these people, Totri? Uh-oh. Hold on. I mean that's Snoop and Pac, baby. Come on. All right, good, good, good. Because one, because I was <laughs> wearing, I asked, I uh, this guy was wearing a Death Row shirt, and I asked him, I said, "Who's your favorite Death Row artist?" And he said, "Suge Knight." <laughs> Get it? It's like, oh no, no. come on, is he kidding? <laughs> yeah, it was it. Is it vast? Pac and Snoop. My my dad when I, I remember being a being a kid, and my dad would would take me and all my friends to to school in the morning, and he was just the entire the entire like hour long drive. To high school, it was just it was Pac, Dude, I, Snoop, I know, Biggie. I know every Tupac song by heart. Seriously, the other day Aurora got in the car and I let her control the music. First song, hit him up. Right, love it. Absolutely lyrics, love it. Watch it. I keep Shoot my hand on the gun because they got me on the run. Now I'm back in the courtroom <laughs> waiting on the outcome. Free Tupac is all that's on my homie's mind, but at the same time, I'm trying to get mine. That was very, very, very. Show is off the know. rails now, man. Yeah, that is good. Okay, Totri, what time are you? Uh, what time are you uh, guys doing all your uh, doing all your dirty work here? We got we we will be live at noon to have the the conversation that we've been waiting since 2021 to have. Um, so definitely, if you're an Arizona fan, we welcome the trolls, man. We welcome the trolls.